thank God for the United States. Today we are we're still in a series of preparing for war, and we're covering a lot. And I don't know if you notice or not, but Trump even said more in this series than you were before. Or you become more aware that you were being attacked. And so with that being said, we have to have a battle plan. Tell someone a battle plan. Hallelujah. Today we're going to be talking about a battle plan. We need a battle plan. And not just, you know, you, you have a plan for your life. You have a plan for things you want to do. But you need a spiritual battle plan. Hallelujah. I said you need a spiritual battle plan. Because whatever you want to do, you need to make sure the Lord goes with you. Can we get a shout there? Hallelujah. Let's go to 2 Chronicles uh, 25th chapter. And then verse 5 through 11. And if you, uh, hallelujah, you get there, just stand to your feet for verse 1. And we'll be seated afterwards. Hallelujah. Today we're talking about a battle plan. And it says in um, 2 Chronicles 25 and verse 5. And it reads, Hallelujah. And moreover, Amaziah gathered um, Judah together and made them captain over thousands and captain over hundreds. And according to the house of their fathers, throughout all Judah and Benjamin, and he numbered them from 20 years old and above and found them 300,000 choice men able to go forth to war that could handle spear and shield. You may be seated. And verse 6 says, And he hired also a hundred thousand men of valor out of Israel from a hundred talents of silver. But there came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel, to wit, with all the children of Ephraim. But if thou wilt go, do it, be strong for battle, be strong for the battle, God shall make thee fall before the enemy, for God has power to help and to what? And to cast down. And Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. And then Amaziah separated them to wit the army that was come to him out of Ephraim to go home again. Wherefore their anger were quickly kindled against Judah, and they returned home in great anger. And Amaziah strengthened himself and led forth the people, his people, and went to the valley of salt and smote the children of Sarah ten thousand. Praise God for the reading of his word. So there we see that Amaziah was um, a young man when he came into uh, when he came into our uh, kingship. He was only 25 years old, but yet still, he had enough sense to make a plan. Right. Hallelujah. How can we go through life without a plan? Hello. You can't come out of debt if you don't have a plan. Oh, hallelujah. I guess that's why some of us are still in debt, because we don't have a plan to get out of it. And if you don't have a plan to get out of it, you want to stay in it. And so therefore, this young man, he had a plan, hallelujah, on how he was going to expand the kingdom. And he called folk, and he got these men together, and, and he brought them, and he found a choice men. So God told me, it's time for us to start prophesying things. Hallelujah. I'm prophesying to the men that God has called for the kingdom. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that prophecy is needed. So we need to call folk the sons that are designed to help spread the kingdom of God. We got to have a plan. Tell someone you need a plan. You need a plan. You need a plan. You need a plan. So mighty men of valor. I'm calling both the mighty men of valor. I'm calling both the, the warriors for the kingdom. I'm calling for the sons of the gospel to come forth. Hallelujah. It's time for us to quit hiding in the woodwork. It's time for us to quit hiding in our addiction, hiding in our desires and our passion. It's time for us to stand up and be called men of God. Hallelujah. God is calling for the men. You are the priest of your house. You are the foundation that he's building upon. And so we got to get in place. That's what we get in place. You can't fight the war without a plan. You got to have a strategy against the enemy because the enemy got a strategy against you. Ooh, hallelujah. Don't you think the devil don't have a plan set up to keep you in destruction, to keep you in bondage? 
And he carries out his plan. Hallelujah. He don't put it on the side and say, oh, I'll get to that another day. Y'all know how y'all like to procrastinate? Hello? A plan don't work if you're a procrastinator. You can write it all out. He said, write the vision, make it plain. Hallelujah. But if you don't carry it out, Come on, hallelujah. It can be a beautiful vision, but if you don't carry it out, it ain't going to do no good. We put off what we can do today to tomorrow. That don't sound like you're working the plane. While at the same time, where you going on kind of nonchalant, you going around like statistical, hallelujah, the devil has set you up. Hallelujah, he has snare put in place. He got enemies, hallelujah, ready to ambush you. Hallelujah. And so therefore, we got to have a plan. Putting on the whole arm of God is part of the plan. Hallelujah. Putting on the whole arm of God is part of the plan. But also, you got to operate up under his spirit. Hallelujah. I'm glad I got one again. Praise God. The battle plan, tell someone the battle plan is given through the Holy Spirit with prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the battle plan is through the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, with prophecy. In other words, we have to make sure that whatever we're doing, we're lining up with God. Can they get amen there? Hallelujah. Look at this verse. He's saying, now it came to pass in verse 3, the kingdom was established to him that he slew his servants that had killed the kings of his father. But he slew not their children, but did as it was written in the law of the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, The father shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the father, but every man should die for his own sin. Hallelujah. We might die for our own sin, but don't mean we can't pass. Hallelujah. The habits, hallelujah, the proclivities of what we do into our children. Why? Because our children watch us. Tell someone you need a plan for your family. Hallelujah. Guess what? We're all going into a family. You can't say you're alone. You were born into a family. Hello. You can't say you single because you were born into a family. And you can't say you single if you're in Christ. Why? Because Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So you can't be alone. Hello. We use singleness to define relationships. Hallelujah. But I don't want to be defined by a man or a woman. Hello. You can be without a man and still not be single. Because you know you got the Lord on your side. Ooh, hallelujah. I wish I could get an amen up in here one day. Hallelujah. So therefore, we need to know that we have to have a plan for our children. And we have to have a plan for ourselves. Because our kids, hallelujah, are watching us. Hello. Don't you boy? Hallelujah. Don't you know everything you're doing, they're watching. They're observing. Even though they might not be speaking about it, they're still watching it. So therefore, we have to make sure that we have a plan for our family and that we are, we are projecting the right things. Hallelujah. What do you mean? I don't want to be projecting a deadbeat dad who is always absent and full of excuses. Can y'all women get an amen right now? Hallelujah. We didn't know when we was uh, uh when we got in relationship with that person that that person was going to be like that. Hallelujah. But yet still, if they have come into the knowledge of God, hallelujah, you can't be dead beat anymore because God has made you alive. How you going to put off taking care of your children and call yourself a man? Oh, I don't think he got a plan. Hallelujah. If his plan is not to take care of his family. Hello. If anything, the man should go without. I know y'all women get an amen right there. Hallelujah. That don't mean we go out just so you can get a new pocketbook, though. We ain't, yeah, we ain't going out just so you can get a new pair of shoes. Hallelujah. But if I ain't going to eat, hallelujah, and we're going to be a short in food, then I'll, I'll step back and not eat. To make sure the family is taken care of. Hallelujah. Because a man is supposed to be strong. But we got a bunch of deadbeats. Just so we're deadbeats. Yeah. How the deadbeat dad doesn't even sound right. Hallelujah. So we got to be careful of what we are projecting to our children. Because our children are watching us. And if we don't have a plan for their life, if we don't have a plan to bring them together, to teach them about God, the devil show sure will. Because if the, watch this. He say that the sins of the father will not be passed on to the son. You know, or he was saying that the sons will not die from the sins of the father. But at the same time, if the father is in a simple state, he will teach his child in the 
directly your sins. And guess what's going to happen? They'll choose to follow after their father. And walk in the same thing. When they go from woman to woman. Oh, come on. How do they have all kind of babies out of well off and take care of none of them? I ain't going to get too many of this here. Hallelujah. But we can't always have an excuse. If God has brought you into the new, hallelujah, you shall be transformed now. If anything else, my children want to know I'm saved. If nobody else outside the house don't know, the children in the house should know. Hello. Or are you projecting that you're a bitter mom? Bitter mom who spews out venom with every word. Ooh, hallelujah. Somebody said it didn't they? Hallelujah. So uh, there's an agreement there that you can be bitter. And don't know you project and bitter to your children. All of a sudden, your children have that same little sassy attitude you got. You, you like to ride off that sarcasm. But it's just your bitter coming out. It ain't making you better. It makes you funny. Hallelujah. But it doesn't make you better. Because now, your same child, then you ask your child, why are you acting like that? Well, I'm just watching you. I'm just emulating what you're doing. Y'all don't want to shout in here. Hallelujah. So therefore, we got to be careful. If you don't have a plan, we had a plan with our children. Our plan was to get up every morning and pray with them. Before they went to school, before they left to go out into the day, we prayed with them. Just because prayer was taken out of school, it means prayer was taken out of the house. And so we will pray with our children every morning before we send them off to school. Hello, you got to have a spiritual plan for your house. Hello, we want to read our word. You want to read your word. You want to study the God Bible. You want to come to church. You want to definitely be in Sunday school. Hello. Hallelujah. If y'all ain't teaching your children at home, y'all should at least send them to the church. Can we get an amen there? One thing about the ball mom, hallelujah, all back in the day, if you didn't, if they didn't go, they were sitting their children. They might have been the biggest drunk or the biggest whore in town, but they were sitting their children. I ain't calling nobody mama whore. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because men can be just as big as whores as women. Can we get amen there? Hallelujah. And so, therefore, we have to make sure we're training our children up. That is a plan. Hallelujah. You can't tell me God is not in that plan. For you to teach his word to his to your children. That's part of God's plan. So therefore, we must have a plan. Tell someone he must have a plan. Because if you don't have a plan, how will someone already plan for you? Hallelujah. If you don't have a plan, somebody else already got a plan for you. And I don't know about y'all, I don't want to be the devil's plan. He might have a plan to kill me and destroy me, but I got a plan with God, hallelujah, that I will be triumph. I will be victorious. I will overcome. Hallelujah. I will, I will sing victorious songs of the Lord because he brought me out of this thing. So therefore, we have to understand that you got to have a plan for your family, but also you need to have a plan for yourself. You know, we're living in this generation now called, called me time. What is a me time? I need me some me time. Hello. What is me time? Hallelujah. How can you ever have me time when you're in a family? How can you ever have me time if you're a mom or if you're a dad? You can't have no me time. Hello. You didn't think you can put your children on pause? Oh, I know y'all want it. But you can't. Hallelujah. It's see like I, I just I just need some me time. I just need some me time. Baby, you ain't gonna never get no me time. Hallelujah. You need some God time. Jesus. He'll give you peace in the midst of your situation. That's the time you need. The time you are. I need to get away from everything. You need to get to God. Amen. Hallelujah. We can't have a plan without God. All right. We must, all our plans must include God. Tell someone it must include God. Must include God. Hallelujah. Watch this. And he say, in Amazon verse 9, go drop down to 9. He said, Amazon say to the man of God, but what shall we do for the hundred talents which I give? Now go back to verse 8. He said, but if thou wilt go, do it. Be strong for the battle. God shall make thee fall before the enemy, for God has power. Tell someone, God got power. God got power to help or to hinder. Hallelujah. He got power to rescue you or let you drown. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I need to get the fight. I need to get the plan of the Lord. Because this plan is to prosper me. And for me to be in good health. Ooh, hallelujah. So 
therefore, we have to make sure we understand. He said, God has the power to help or to cast down. Even though you think you're going on behalf of God, God can still stand up against you. So he said, look here. Now, this is the prophet coming to him, right? Telling the king, hey, king, look, you can't hear God for yourself, so let me talk for you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. If you ain't got that deep relationship with God for yourself, you need to listen to the man or woman of God when they do speak for him. If you ain't going to read your word, praise God, don't fight the word that comes forth. Right. Can we get a shout right now? Hallelujah. I think somebody on Facebook Live, hallelujah, is going to get a, a breakthrough today. Hallelujah. Because they say, I need a plan. Hallelujah. But I first need to consult God. Hallelujah. God is this way you want me to be. God is this way you want me to go. Hello. No matter what you do in life, you got to make sure God is in it. How we consult the God? I had to consult God before I left a job paying way more than where I was working at. Because maybe God wasn't finished with me yet. Hallelujah. And I don't want to move outside of his brain. Hello. And some of us stay in the same place because we never ask God. Yeah. Hallelujah. You are not comfortable in it. Amen. Hallelujah. But God, hallelujah, never just leave you in a place of just being comfortable. He always wants you to grow. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And when you grow, it stretches you. Hallelujah. When you need stretch, it's sometimes it's painful. But it's for your good. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but the plan of God is to prosper you. You might go through a little hell, but hallelujah. God want to bring you out of hell. You can have a testimony. I was in hell. Hallelujah. But God brought me out. Y'all thinking hell. Hallelujah. In the heart pier, uh, heart pits. Hallelujah. All the fire. But you can have hell right there in your home. You can have hell right there with your job. You may have hell right there in your family. Hallelujah. Every time you go to a family reunion, every time you go to a family picnic, every time you go to a cookout, how do you catch hell? Yeah. Hello. So therefore, hell is just that place. Hell is a, is, is a place. It, it, it's not just a location. Hallelujah. But it can be situations in your life that bring hell. But I got a God, hallelujah, that will go through the hell with me. Yeah. And bring me out on the other side with a testimony. Hallelujah. I was in it, but I came out of it because God was with me. Hallelujah. Hey, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear your evil because thou art. Oh, come on, tell somebody. He's with me. Don't you know God is with you in all the hell you can? God is with you. The only reason why you have not fall, hallelujah, or fail in it because God is in it. With you. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of help I need when I'm going through. So you got to have a plan for your family, and you got to have a plan for yourself. Because sometimes, hallelujah, listen to this. When you got a plan for your family, it may take a little longer for it to work. Because some things are out of your control. Hallelujah. But the plan for yourself, when you're seeking God, on it, God, I want to have a better life. God, I, I want to be a better person. God, I want to be able to speak better. God, I want to be able to do things better. I want to heart after you. And God can work on you. And it doesn't matter what he's doing to somebody else. Hallelujah. But when you're working with a plan for your family, sometimes you might catch it and the other one is still behind. Hallelujah. But you have to trust God is going to bring them all out. I desire that all shall be saved and none shall perish. One say, hello, me in my whole household shall serve the Lord. I don't know about you, but me and my whole household shall be saved. Tell somebody, me and my household shall be saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can't look at right now. I can't look at this moment in my life. I know I got to believe and have faith that God is going to bring it out. Hallelujah. Even though I don't look that way right now, but eventually God is going to bring it out. It seems like soon as you start prophesying about your children being saved, how do all of a sudden a demon get up in there? Soon as you start talking about a relationship getting better, it seems like all hell break loose in it. Come on, hallelujah. But a lot of time, hallelujah, that's, that's the enemy. Hallelujah, in his desperate mood. Hallelujah. He, he's desperate to keep you. He's desperate to keep 
you in bondage. And so he brings out a frontal attack. Hallelujah. Full frontal attack to try and stop you. Hallelujah. Because you're about to break through. Yeah. Some of your hardest challenges is getting across the finish line. Yeah. Hallelujah. Just as hard as it was for you to cross over the starting line. Hallelujah. And you catch hell trying to get over the finish line. There's a lot of people who have not finished what God has started in them. Hallelujah. But he said, if I start the work, I will finish it. How y'all don't want to talk up here. If he started, he will finish it. Hallelujah. You try to work some stuff out, you can't work out. I feel my help. The only way. And my pastor said, I already brought my help with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God got a plan for us. He has a plan for us. Hallelujah. But we must consult him. We must ask him. Oh, okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Can we go someplace else? I didn't give you the scripture. But is this all right? Can you change over to the next chapter? Hallelujah. As the Amaziah died, praise God, his son, who was 16 years old, Uzziah, hallelujah, came in and off. Go to uh, 26 and um, verse 5. Hallelujah. He was raised up, praise God. And the Bible says, and he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding and visions of God. And as long, tell someone, as long, as long as you sought the Lord, Hallelujah, he said, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to. Oh, y'all need to hear that. As long as you seek in God, he will make you to prosper. You can't go wrong with God in your plan. You can't go wrong with God on your side. You can't go wrong when you sought the Lord. He said he sought the Lord and God made him. Oh, good Lord. God made him to prosper. That's what God made him to prosper. Hallelujah. Sometimes we fight against our own prosperity. But because, hallelujah, we were seeking the Lord, God, I'm going to make you prosper. I'm going to make you prosper. Hallelujah. Even though you're rejecting right now. Hallelujah. Even though you're fighting against me, I'm going to make you prosper. Hallelujah. You shouldn't ask God to come in it if you didn't want him in it. Lord. It's just like having someone on the outside of your house. Hallelujah. They fine. But as soon as you let them into your house, how do you got to take whatever comes along with it? So once you invite God into your house, how do it? And he starts shaking stuff up. Yeah. He, he starts saying, tear the stuff down. How do you can't get mad because you invited him in? Ooh, that's the problem. Some of us don't want to invite him in. And, 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 and another problem is, watch this. How do it? Verse 5 say that Uzziah sought the Lord, right? And because he sought him, God made him to prosper. But watch what happened. This is what catch some folk. How do it when they get off the battle plan? Go to verse uh, 16. Hallelujah. I hope you're walking with me right now. He said, but when he was strong, tell someone, hallelujah, when you get strong, remember your strength didn't come from you. He said, but when he was strong, his heart was Come on, his heart was what? His heart was lifted up to his to his destruction. He started getting all bold and cocky in it. Like he does some great things. How do when God bring you out? Give God the glory for it. You can barely get out of bed because you had depression. You can barely get out, leave out of your house because you had anxiety. But when God stepped in, he prospered you. And now you want to think you're so great and mighty thing. He said, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. Hallelujah. Now, here's the part. You started with him. Why wouldn't you finish with him? Hallelujah. In God, hallelujah. That's why we have to realize. That gift comes without repentance. The gift of God comes without repentance. Hallelujah. Because God will let you step away from him. Hallelujah. And you still call him God, but he doesn't have a relationship with you anymore. He still leaves his gift with you. 
as you adhere to my commandments, my principles, and my orders, I will bless you. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, bless me. I will be obedient. See, we'll be obedient starting off, but we don't want to be obedient all the way to the end. Hallelujah. Don't be like you desire and wait to the end and think you all cock in yourself. Oh, I got money now. I'm out of debt now. I'm good now. You forgot God brought you out of this thing. And if you're not careful, oh, glory, hallelujah, you'll go right back in it and double the debt. <laughs> hallelujah. I don't know about you, but we have to have a plan. Tell someone we have to have a plan. It's critical we have a plan. And our plan must be spiritual. If I'm fighting a battle, hallelujah, I need encouragement from the Lord. You have to be careful who you try to line yourself with. It was telling us there in the 25th chapter, verse 5 through 11, that uh, Amaziah tried to hook up with somebody who he wasn't supposed to line up with, even though they were of the same lineage. But they had the same spirit. Ooh, come on, shout right there. Hallelujah. Just because people in church don't mean they have the same spirit. Hallelujah. There are many churches in this county. But don't mean everybody have the same spirit of God in it. Can you get an amen there? I'm not condemning or judging anyone. I'm just stating a fact. So if you don't believe it, go around and visit all of them. And then come back. Hallelujah. Well, before you come back, let's cast out some demons. Because I'm pretty sure, hallelujah, you want to have some witches. Get all mad at me about it. I'm just stating a fact, though. Hallelujah. That some people don't practice the principles of God. So, therefore, we have to make sure we don't get lined up with the wrong person. And if we consult God, even though it seemed like a good plan for Amaziah to go out and get that 100,000 um, good choice men from Israel, but God said, Don't take the one I need for you to have. He said, The battle I'm taking you into, praise God, you want to need the one outside with you. I said, the one he has assigned with you is the one you need. Because if you don't have them, hallelujah, what's going to happen is you're going to fail along the way. You don't need somebody that comes into your life, hallelujah, you're in a season of distress. And the only one reason they're there is just the benefit of your distress. So therefore, we have to be careful. These men were hired. Uh, of um, servant. There was higher warriors. We don't need no hirelings in the season. Hallelujah. We need some pastors to stand up and say right is right and wrong is wrong. Hallelujah. Whether you like me or don't like me, it really don't matter to me. Hallelujah. I ain't here to please you in the first place. You ever had someone get mad at you because you tell them what God said? Hallelujah. What are you supposed to do, Renee? Who I'm supposed to please? Man of God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we have to make sure God is in our battle plan. I'm going to say this in my close. The war is already won. But you still got the battle to fight. The war was won when Jesus died on the cross. When he got up out of the grave. The war was won. But we still got to fight the battle. Hallelujah. I, I, I can hear uh, Mario right now saying that. Mario saying that. Hallelujah. I'm fighting a battle trying to get to the, the mayor's office. Hallelujah. But you got to make sure you got God in your plan or you will never get there. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. So when you got God lined up in your plan, God's going to prosper your plan. Come on. You can't call on God just in your time of need. You got to work him in your plan. Don't y'all work in your plan? Kind of. Anybody married? Sometimes you got to work in a little bit of color time. By plan. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes your life is so busy. Hey, y'all so surprised. That sometimes you got to say, look, on tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> that way you be resting in your mind that we, we need to hook up. Come on. So therefore, we have to plan to have God in our plan. Every morning you wake up, you plan to have God in your plan. When you went to sleep last night, you had plan in your plan for God to wake you up. And when you got up, put God in your plan again. Say, Lord, you are mighty. 
us from whatever we encounter in this day, oh God. I know we shall be victorious because you're on my side. Well, more like I'm on your side. And you ain't never lost a battle before. So there are battles to fight. And what we don't realize is just coming to church is part of it. You still got a battle when you leave here. Good Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care. I was telling my son, I said, I don't care how many scriptures you read, how many scriptures you quote. Hallelujah. You better have a plan for God in your life to manifest those same things you quote and, 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 and commented about, all those things you are rehearsing, all the things you are speaking. Hallelujah. You better have a plan for God to work in it. What good to have all these scriptures in you and have no plan to carry it out? You're being judged. You're being judged right now. You're being judged by the words you hear. You know, in a wartime situation, not following order will lead to your demise. Your demise. You can actually be executed for not carrying out order in a wartime. And when you got a plan by God, He gives you order through the Holy Spirit. And when you don't operate in it, and then you find yourself dying because you didn't carry out the order from the one who's in charge. I don't know about y'all, but the plan comes from God. He's a visionary. He knows our life. He's seen our beginning and our end. And with that, hallelujah, I'm going to trust one who can see the end. Hallelujah. Some people just see your now right now. But I need someone who can see my end. And encourage me in my now. To tell me it's going to work out. It's going to be all right. Hallelujah. That no matter what phase or stage you go through, I'm there with you. May I have to carry you sometime. Hallelujah. May I have to help you. You may have to lean on me sometime, but I'm going to be there for you. So, therefore, to those men out there and to those women, we're calling you into the gospel. It's time for us to stand up and do what's right. We're living in a pandemic. And it seems like more and more people will fall on their knees and go and cry out to God. But we got less people crying out to God now than we had before. If we had trouble getting you in church prior to the pandemic, you know how hard it's going to be to get you in church afterwards. Can I get an amen there? Hallelujah. It was hard enough. For you to get you there on Easter Sunday. Jesus. To get you there on Christmas. You don't know two times of the year. We go around Christmas and Easter. Don't we know it's going to be big meat time? Y'all know what big meat is? Anybody know what big meat is? That when you eat big meat. That when all the time they come together and they bring the food and out of and after church you have a big meat outside. And so therefore they know they're going to get a good meal there. But now during the pandemic they don't even want to come out. But God is going to use this pandemic. How do they get you on your knees? How do they begin to, for those who are in church, those that are in salvation, now you won't have to begin to examine yourself. Why? Because you got more time around your family now than you had before. It amazed me is that during the pandemic, we find every reason to go to something else except church.
before your situation, before your uh, unfortunate circumstance. The same one who laughing and marching it right now is the same one calling on his name. Say, God, put me in place. God, I need you in place. I was right in my life. I am close this time, for real, for real. Hallelujah. I was on my bicycle. You know, I got two more, praise God. <laughs> I, was, I was riding on my bicycle, and I was like, Lord, and I was like, what are we ministering on? What is this series of preparing for war? And he said, you need a battle plan. I said, you need a battle plan. I said, well, Lord, show me the battle plan for my life. Because I'm always asking for the battle plan for ministry, for the life of those in ministry. But I said, Lord, show me the battle plan for my life and for what you already showed me. Refresh my memory for what you showed me a long time ago. Hello. Sometimes we always look it out for somebody else, but we need to ask God to show the plan for ourselves. Come on. What good is the plan work going on to y'all? Hallelujah. I'm still in bondage. So therefore, we have to make sure. And the last thing, last thing, hallelujah, for real, for real, hallelujah, is this. I thought back this morning when the Lord put me in my spirit when I was a child. We used to have these, these uh, wars, you know, gang wars, street against street. Y'all had them? I guess not, you know, I'm a little bit older. But Bird Street was against Reed Street. That's in Fairfax. You know what the schoolhouse is? Those streets that's right between the school, the schools in between them, that's Bird Street where I lived at, and Weed Street was the next street over. And we would have these little wars where you get late at night, hallelujah, and dust and hit, and nighttime call, we just start getting rocks and bottles and sticks, and we'd be throwing them at each other. But what I had done, hallelujah, early during the day, I, I, I was like the, the, the strategist put up, the, I had wood warfare, hallelujah, or jungle warfare. I was strategic in it. Hallelujah. So I knew we were going to have war that night. I would have put me some rocks in certain strategic spots along the way. So when I run it, hallelujah, I throw the rocks and I run to the next pile. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right here. Hallelujah. I have a strategy then without God. All right, all right. With God, hallelujah, I know my strategy will be better. And the reason why we was winning back then is because it was working. Because I could get in the woods in the dark and do the past. Hallelujah. I could get around and nobody could follow me. So I could come in close to them. But when we was set up from street to street, we had one road in between. And you had to fight on that road. But I learned to fight in the jungle. So God will give you strategy if you invite him into your plan. You can't just put it all in one. How do you got to have a plan? God works piece by piece, part by part. We're trying to get it all fitted and worked out all at one time. But God is working out in part. You know in part, you prophesy in part. But the time is going to come when it be fully manifested. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes we judge it so what and don't even see the work God has done in you. Because we look at that yesterday. And this is this moment. I don't know about you, but in the twinkling of an eye, you can be changed and transformed from darkness to light. You get in there? Why are you standing on your feet? Mighty men of battle, mighty women of battle. We need more warriors in the kingdom of God. And we need warriors that are willing to follow the battle plan of the Lord. God might send you to a, a peculiar area to do a peculiar thing, but trust him and believe that he got a part, he got a plan to do it all. So with your hands raised and your hearts open, say, Lord, help me. I need your plan in my plan. I need your Holy Spirit to guide me, to instruct me, to give me my spiritual plan to fight the battles I'm a part of right now. Father, I thank you. And I believe, I receive it by faith. Hallelujah, your holy word. I believe it by faith, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, is instructing me in how to 
shall fight this battle I've been right yet. And I shall be victorious because I sold you, Lord. And you say you will prosper in my way. Thank you, Lord. For prospering my way right now. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. For prospering my way. For prospering this battle I'm fighting right now. For giving me, hallelujah, the victory. Hallelujah. For giving me the victory right now. That I'm above and not beneath. Not the head and not the tail. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed coming out. I thank you, Lord. Deliverance in this house right now. And Lord, Father, we thank you right now for those who are repentant in their spirit, who started in your plan and left out of your plan. But God, I thank you that your Holy Spirit drew them back into your plan and into your way. And for those, oh God, hallelujah, who thought not to put you in their plan, Father, I thank you, hallelujah, that their hearts are opened up now sought you to seek you to get your guide to get your direction father i thank you right now that you will bless them abundantly oh lord show them that you will prosper their way as long as they are listening to you lord father i thank you right now for change hearts right now father i thank you right now for the dead be dead coming back a, a lively father, a warrior, a king, oh God. Hallelujah, a priest in this house. Oh, I thank you right now, oh God, for the mother, oh God, who might have been venomous, hallelujah, in their word, oh God. Now be quiet and be get the spirit, oh God. Speak with authority and power in the Holy Spirit, oh Lord. Let their word be crafted in your word, oh God. Hallelujah, let their word be guided by your word, oh Lord. Lord, I thank you right now, oh God. For they know that life and death is in the power of the tongue, oh Lord. And I thank you right now they'll speak on life and they speak death, oh Lord. Father, I praise you for deliverance right now in this house. From things hidden and unseen right now, oh God. Father, you are a revealer. Pull back the veil in our lives right now, God. The things that we might have become comfortable with, oh God. Father, I thank you right now. Pull back that veil. Let us see the ugliness of it, oh God. Let us be confronted with us, oh God, that we may be delivered out of it through your word, oh Lord. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit stirring up inside of us a desire to be warriors, to be mighty men and women of valor. Lord, I thank you right now that we will take the charge. We will carry out the orders, oh God. Without complaining, oh God. I thank you right now, oh God. We will carry out with willingness of heart. Cheerful, oh God. Even as we march into death, oh Lord. We know we march it into life, oh God. We thank you, oh Lord, for what you're doing in our lives. Continue to pour out your spirit upon us. To continue to increase our faith and increase our wisdom. Increase our knowledge, oh God. Let us not just be knowledgeable, oh God. But let us have understanding, oh Lord. And Father, I thank you and praise you right now for your gift of your Holy Spirit in our lives.